All right, with that, with that, let me try to get to some of your questions here. Let's see if I have the time. If I have, if I, Michael Schechner Group, that's another one that I fucking downloaded. Stumbled upon that one where it was uh, metal music before it had makeup and hairspray. <laughs> and it's just fucking. Um, Oh, here we go. Great emails. Okay. Salads. Dear Billy Cabbage Hips. I wish I had cabbage hips. I have frosted face. Um, If you're trying to lose weight, be careful of complex salads. Some vegetables aren't meant to go together with things like quinoa or brown rice. Or in your case, quinoa, you pussy. Just kidding. Always look into it. Oh, fuck you. Give me the answers, man. Some healthy salads can slow digestion. Don't want my favorite comedian to look or feel bloated. Go fuck yourself. All right. Hey, you eating a salad? You eating a salad to try and lose weight? Hey, just to let you know, some of those actually don't work. Well, which one? Which ones? Which ones don't work? Sorry, got to go. Look it up sometime. If I didn't know better, I'd say you're trolling me. All right, girlfriend pissed at me for her selfishness. Uh... Oh, Jesus. Dear Billy Gynecomastia. Look it up. All right, I'll look it up. There's some doctor laughing right now. Gynecomastia is a condition of overdel... <laughs> oh, my God. You intellectual cunt, you is a condition of overdevelopment or enlargement of the breast tissue in men or boys. The breasts become larger. They may grow unevenly. Often happens when a preteen or teenage boy is going through hormonal changes or puberty. Oh, that's fucking terrible. Somebody have to go through that. Um, All right. And now you know what? I fucking lost my questions. Where the fuck are they? Now I have to click on every window. All right, girl. Okay, okay. She so just called Billy Billy Fat Tits in a medical gynecomastia. All right, I recently got into an argument with my girlfriend over a vacation pitch I made. We've been dating for over a year and are both medical students. Look at you guys rolling in the dough. But do you have time to see anybody? Do you see each other and uh, and want to practice in Montana or Colorado when we finish school? I asked her if she wanted to go on a week-long vacation to Colorado this week winter in order to see what it's like. She's been twice before, and I've never been. She replies with, well, you don't like skiing as much as I do, and if we're not going to be skiing every day, then I don't think it's worth the money for me to go. She's also rich as fuck, so money is not an issue. I told her we can go skiing three out of five days. We're there, but there's plenty more to do besides that, like... Breweries, snowshoeing, snowmobiles, etc. Well, that sounds fun. You go to the brewery, right? Then you go snowshoeing, hammered. You fucking, you know, work off the booze weight. Then you get on a snowmobile and you ride home. Anyways, he goes, silly me for thinking that being a compromising person was a good idea because she hit me with, that's not something I want to do, so I'm not going. So I replied, okay, sorry, I even asked. She proceeded to say, no need to have an attitude. Buddy, I'm going to stop right here and remind you of how many women out there would love to be married to a doctor. This chick, is the way you're, I mean, granted, this is just your side of the story. This chick is a fucking nightmare. Um, Anyway. And I, I would like to revoke her medical license because she's too fucking up her own ass and she's going to be taking care of people. Anyway, and all a, a medical degree is going to do to this person is make her even more arrogant. Anyway, and then when I tried to change the subject to something else, she got mad at me saying that I shouldn't be mad at her. Now she's been ignoring me for two days because I asked her to go on a Colorado vacation with me and do multiple activities instead of just, yeah, one thing, the fucking thing she wants to do. In the meantime, I've talked to my buddies and the five of us are going to go instead. Whoa! Oh! Oh, hey, you know what? 
You got balls. I don't get too mad at that. You're like Christopher right now. Hey, Tommy, why don't you go fuck yourself? That's what you just said. That's exactly what you need to do with a fucking woman like that. Well, go fuck yourself. I'll go with my friends anyway. So she can just sit at home and be surprised when my Instagram posts are me and the boys having cold ones in Boulder. Love the podcast and can't wait to see you in Atlanta uh, in October. Ah, is there anything better than self-esteem? And before I get trashed by the women out here, is if a guy did that to you, that's exactly what the fuck you should do. This is how you set up a healthy fucking relationship. Okay? You made a suggestion. She said she didn't want to do it because of this, this, and this. You offered a compromise. Not only did she not want to do it, she acted like a fucking child. So what did you do? Did you sit there and be hostage to her fucking own goddamn emotions? You said, no, fuck it. And you're going to go anyway. And you know what that's going to do? That's going to make her either grow the fuck up or break up with you, which is perfect. She's either going to become an adult and realize that she was in the fucking wrong and he's not be such a fucking baby, or she's going to leave you and you can go find somebody, a woman that is an adult. Who doesn't want to go to Colorado? I want to go to Colorado and go to that, go to the fucking that hotel where they shot The Shining. I didn't realize it was only an hour and a half northwest of Denver. I want to go check that thing out. Stand outside of it and just yell, Wendy! All right, overrated. Hey, Bill Blurry Eyes. I'm writing to you from London, where there is even a more boring version of baseball, and that is cricket. I like cricket. I like those games. What everybody everything has to be so fucking fast. Just sit around and fucking watch it. Have a good time. Shoot the shit with your friends. Anyway, to be fair, I moved I moved here about a year ago from Eastern Europe, so I didn't grow up watching cricket and rugby, but I but basketball and football, handball, etc. Basically everything that has the word ball in the name. Uh, my best experience with watching a baseball game was when I was in San Diego. A whale's vagina. I remember that team was playing against a team called the Cardinals. Love the naming you guys have. I guess you were just running out of any Native American related stuff. What are you talking about? We ran out of animals. Is what we did. So now I don't know what the I don't know what the that Seattle team is called the Crackers. And it's some sort of myth, mythical fucking octopus. Uh, but basically, my friends and I... Oh, I get, he's making fun of the racist shit. I get it. All right. But basically, my friends... Yeah, because you guys are so fucking progressive in Europe. If you, guys, you, know, you guys, if you're not on the same currency, somebody thinks they're a superior race over there and tries to wipe everybody else out every fucking 20 years. Uh, but basically, my friends and I barely made it to the sixth inning, after which we went to a bar nearby where the locals were having a karaoke night and had no talent for singing at all. And even that was more interesting than the game. Too slow, too much repetitiveness, and too much fireworks. Judging by the celebration, people might be, think the USS Midway aircraft carrier they have just docked after a successful battle every time somebody hits a ball. Anyways, loves the, love the podcast. All right, so you don't like cricket. You don't like cricket or baseball. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people like that right now. If, it, if the game isn't like... I mean, if you go to a w, uh, WNBA, if you go to a fucking NBA game, every time there's a stoppage of play, they have tumblers and DJs and all kinds of shit fucking going on. Um, I don't know. I hope they're not shooting off fireworks every time something happens in baseball now. I know, that, I know they do shit with, like, the scoreboard, and they try to crank it up and make it really fucking loud. Uh, it's a real, it's, we're in a really bad time right now for live sports. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that it's going to come back. Uh, all right. A word for new segment. Dear Monsieur Fire Crutch, <laughs> I am a longtime listener from England and love your show. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, Monsieur Fire Crutch, that's how he should have said. Over the years, I have heard you talk about how you were learning to speak French. On and off, I do. Uh, for the last few weeks, you've been talking about the strange feeling of regret about the things you wish you said at the time, but didn't think of it until it's too late. Well, I thought you would like to know that the French have a fantastic phrase for this. I remember it 
as it's maybe my favorite French fa- phrase, as I spent most of my life suffering from the same annoying problem. Le spirit, le spirit, I don't want to say, le spirit, le spirit, de l'escalier. Um, the spirit of the stairs. Ah, the spirit of the staircase. Woo! Literally the meaning, the spirit of the staircase. I'll let Wikipedia explain. This name for the phenomenon comes from the French encyclopedist and philosopher Denis Dierot's description of such a situation in his Paradox sur le Comédien. Paradox of the Comédien. During a dinner at the home of statesman Jacques Necker, uh, Necker, I remember uh, was made to, a remark was made to Dierot, which led him, left him speechless at the time because he explains a sensitive man such as myself overwhelmed by the argument leveled against him becomes confused and doesn't come to himself again until at the bottom of the stairs um anyway it's a bunch of shit here in french which i remember a lot of these words once i get past the instrument exam i'm gonna i'm gonna pick this shit back up again in this case, the bottom of the stairs refers to the architecture of the kind of uh, hotel or uh, mansion to which Diderot had been invited. In such houses, the reception rooms were on the Estage Noble, one floor above the ground floor. To have reached the bottom of the stairs means to have definitively left the gathering. Seems like this was pissing off the French long before us idiots figured it out. I hope this adds a new phrase to your vocabulary that you can mutter to yourself. Um, or maybe they were fucking such cunts to each other they came up with this phrase uh, that you can mutter it to yourself to starve off the internal rage. P.S. Check out Dean Martin's version of Gentle uh, Gentle on My Mind as it puts a strangely positive spin on the lyrics like Dean was happy to not see her again. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Oh, the Glenn Campbell song. Yeah, well, Dean was the coolest fucker ever. All right, let's wrap this up here. Um, things I should have said. Hey, Billy Mozzarella Legs. I've uh, been listening to the podcast for a long time and a big fan. I have my own. I should have said this story from when I was 18 working at a golf course. Look at this. And how old is he now? He's still thinking about it. I worked at a fairly high-end golf course in Vancouver. Even wrote it out for me. I was one of the bag boys who greeted you when you showed up and got your clubs set up on your cart. I did that job. Part of the job was for us to take out, take note of the tee sheet so when players arrived and gave their tee time, we could recall the name without referring back to the tee sheet. Made us look good. Well, one day, a guy was walking up from the parking lot, and I walk over to greet him and get his bag. I say, hey, how are you? What time are you teeing off? He replies, 1040. I say, it's I say, perfect. It's booked under Mr. Smith. He goes, I can't remember the last name. The T sheet gave the first name and the last name of the person who booked. He quickly replies, that's actually Dr. Smith. And then proceeded to lecture me how he spent 10 years in medical schools. Uh, oh, that he didn't. He hadn't spent 10 years in medical school to be called Mr. Ah. This guy needs to marry that fucking Colorado chick. Now, having some family members who have gone through medical school, I know they only spent eight years in school. I wish I could have said, isn't medical school only eight years and just left it at that? Oh, that would have been great. I still think about that encounter and many other things I wish I could tell him now. As, as always, go fuck yourself. Yeah, isn't it always eight years? And did you go to medical school so you could exaggerate it to somebody half your fucking age that's putting your bag of clubs? All right. If you were athletic, you'd be playing a sport. Enjoy your activity for the next fucking three hours, you cunt. Um, hey, Bill. Bill should be the next Batman Burr. I don't know about that. I play a villain, though. Uh, back in the day, my high school had a batshit crazy Christian group that swept through all the grades with people acting. I could be the next Lex Luthor. Um, through all the grades of people actively recruiting students while being very secretive, secretive about what actually happens at the meetings, including towards parents. Um, wow, that's crazy. 
probable kid fucking aside, the thing that really pissed me off was when of the one of these when one of these dickheads spoke in class about how one of my favorite bands at the time, Ramstein, should be banned from the school because even though it is in Russian, you can clearly hear them calling children to Satan, etc. I just popped in my headphones and got on with it, but to this day I wish I said that's amazing that you speak Russian, but more amazing since they are a German band, you cunt. Cheers and go fuck yourself. I know. I know, but you don't say it. And that's why we have this segment called What I Should Have Said. It'll haunt you for the rest of your life. What was said? Dear Billy Chunky Trunks. <laughs> fuck you. Oh, that's so true. This is a story from eighth grade. We had a health teacher who was a complete scumbag. Let's call him Mr. G. Now, this is eighth grade, so we're 12 years old. This guy, a grown-ass man, would flirt with the girls in class. Can't stress scumbag enough. 12 years old? Ah, There was always that teacher that, you know, flirted with the high school chicks. That was bad enough. Oh, my God. So a few weeks before Christmas that year, Mr. G was involved in a car accident while inebriated. Great. Uh, He was not driving, but was drunk. I know this is a fact because my dad and brothers are volunteer firemen and responded to this accident. During the extradition of Mr. G and his friends from the car, Mr. G was throwing empty beer bottles at the firemen, telling them to leave. My dad and brothers tell me this because they know I can't stand him. I tell people at school and it gets around school and gets back to Mr. G. Uh Uh-oh. You were talking out of school. Mr. G confronts us in class one day, goes on a rant saying he wasn't drunk, blah, blah, blah. He goes on to say that the speedometer only said 45. A quiet kid in class named Blake says from the back of the class, that's what the speedometer looks like when you're drunk. (laughs) We all died laughing. The look on his face was priceless. He held Blake after class, but no detention or anything. I still remember it to this day. I'm 34 now. Still one of the funniest things I ever heard. Thanks for the laughs during a really shitty uh, year. Yeah, this is, uh, oh, what was said. Oh, that's great. Oh, I got to think of those. You know, it's funny. I I didn't have too many of those in my life. Even growing up, like, I would think of comebacks and shit. Sometimes I would just fall on the knife and get detention on purpose just to get the laugh. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I had the typical comedian upbringing, where people always got the best of me. <laughs> then I'd walk away. Oh, that's what I should have said. God, I'm so stupid. All right, that's the podcast, everybody. Uh, half of four, happy Fourth of July weekend to you. Even if you're not in this country, you still get a Fourth of July. Why not celebrate it? There's got to be some loophole that you can come up, you know, you can come up with. I identify as American. Therefore, I'm taking a three-day weekend on July 4th. You know, why do they get that holiday and we don't? Um, That's it. Go fuck yourselves and I'll check in on you on Thursday. 